Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be going over a team from the one and only Dunebug97. He's a Twitch streamer uh, for Pokemon Go. I was going to say he streams on Twitch. Um, for Pokemon Go, you can check him out. I'll put this channel in the description below. Um, obviously, he's one of the best battlers there's ever been. Um, he's three-time regional winner, second place international uh, at the European International um, for Pokemon Play events. So, yeah. Very good battler, probably a lot better than I am. Um, actually, just definitely a lot better. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to be going over a team that he used on his last stream. It was uh, Cresselia with um, Skeleturge and Vigoroth. So in most cases, Vigoroth will probably end up being your safe swap. Uh, but that doesn't mean it'll always be. Um, if there's a situation where Skeleturge can come in, obviously getting the incinerate damage not not even just damage really the incinerate uh energy is really good and you can end up throwing like these big charge moves like shadow ball into uh into your opponents um but one of the more notable things is that about this team is that the chrysalia is actually running uh psycho cut grass knot and moon blast so moon blast um moon blast versus future sight has been a big thing in this last um we'll say like almost two seasons i think um it really depends what else is in the meadow what you're trying to get to and i think that the reason that he's going for moonblast here is because um there's really been a resurgence of umbreon uh for one and you don't want to be just super weak to umbreon uh, in the uh, uh well this team's kind of weak to umbreon in general i mean it's kind of neutral i guess uh, to, to good, but, um, Umbreon can definitely do work against all three. So you would just want to have to make, you just want to make sure to have a move that hits all three basically, or that all three can hit Umbreon with, uh, also a big usage spike in Gudra because of the community day and having thunder punch. Um, and you having a super effective move against Gudra is a good idea. Gudra idea. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's get through that. All right. Now that we're done with that, let's go ahead uh, if, and get into the video. But first, if you haven't, definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, and let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So we have uh, Shadow Alolan Sand Slash here in the lead. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, why this is more of an ABB team than you th might think um, right off the bat. Uh, and obviously that is Cresselia is pretty bad against steel types in a general sense and uh, Vigoroth having counter is super effective against steel Skeledurge having um, uh, what's it called incinerate also going to be super effective against steel now in this specific matchup is double super effective against uh, the ice typing as well but um, another way that it's ABB is that Cresselia is actually really good against specifically water types or I mean water types, but specifically more of like the mud boys, like Shadow Whizcash, which I'm, I've said is good in the meta, Shadow Quagsire, or even regular Quagsire as well. Um, as well as a lot of the lanterns are now running Water Gun. And um, uh, yeah, you're gonna wanna have Cresselia in there against it. And you definitely don't wanna have like Skeleturge against a Water Gun Lantern, let me tell you that much. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this battle it's been a while here in the intro all right so we swap into uh skeleturge again just basically getting that super uh uh energy lead on whatever's coming in next it is an azumarill so it's a little bit risk not risky but it's a little bit bad but also it's a little bit not bad also because they almost never have a hydro pump so if you're going to be resisting these this next move it means that you can basically go for this shadow ball here and if they don't have a very good Azumarill, this double Shadow Ball plus all this incinerate damage can actually add up. So we already am taking, we already are taking the shield advantage here. Um, and with Grass Knot, it's basically in Grass Knot range, so we can definitely go for a little bit of energy lead here. Also, or gaining energy going into back into the um, Alolan Sand Slash matchup. Uh, but another thing to note is that the Azumarill really doesn't do a lot of damage to Cresselia. Cresselia, bulky type itself, so definitely not worrying too much about the damage here. We do go for the Grass Knot. Probably going to end up switching into Vigoroth. And now Vigoroth with a shield advantage uh, is going to be very good against whatever's in the back. And now we see that what's in the back is actually for Alligator, so we're double resisting the Shadow Claw damage. And um, probably just going to shield whatever they do here and get the counter damage, which is double super effective, into the... Um, 
uh, what's it called, into the alone sand slash there. All right, a really good reason to also have Moon Blast here is that you actually outpace the Annihilate to the Shadow Ball, so you don't have to worry about, at least to the very beginning, uh, is this a Shadow Ball, is it not a Shadow Ball, what should I do? Ends up making a call here on the Night Slash. Um, okay, they end. We, we end up going for a bait here, which I don't necessarily agree with, but um, what can I do? But just watch greatness happen. Uh, probably, I guess he thinks that they're going to shield, and they end up shielding, but uh, we're going to have to shield here too as well. Um, this could be a Shadow Ball, and if it is a Shadow Ball, we actually get a lot of in, uh, farm here. They end up coming in with the Skarmory. We come into the Skeleters. The only thing is that they can get to the Brave Bird. I don't think that the Brave Bird will KO from here. Um, it's close, though. All the Firemon are very, like, attack-weighted, and yeah, it looks like you do end up surviving, and we can go for... The Shadow Ball. You notice that he did click the Shadow Ball, even though, um, well, we wouldn't be able to get to it if they did decide to throw early there, but it does seem like that, um, and we actually had the Moon Blast here, not sure if he knew that, but it does seem like if they got that one extra, it would have KO'd, and they have a Dugong in the back, and we have a Grass move and a Fighter in the back, so, or a Pseudo Fighter, I guess, so not great for us, or not great for them, rather, with a Dugong. All right, a safe swap into Sableye. And we save swap into Vigoroth. So this matchup used to be, well, it's still a little awkward um, because they can definitely hit us with the foul plays. But it used to be really, really awkward for um, for both parties because Bulldoze was the only move that could actually hit the Sableye. Now that Vigoroth does have Rock Slide, you don't have to go for this massive move and then bait with a possibly double-resisted move that uh, Body Slam is since uh, Sableye is a Ghost and Ghost double resist normal. Um, we do get that move through probably wanting to just maintain switch and we can definitely just farm down from here and we'll uh, get that switch back they end up coming back in with the azumarill again we don't really care that they have an extra shield advantage um chrysalia is going to be able to take all the moves that azumarill can do here now the only thing is that that shield advantage for the third pokemon could be very tough but we still have a decent amount of vigoroth i believe we're close to a move there if not in a move already um them trying to switch in and catch but um, we also still have a full Skeledurge, which possibly can do a lot of damage as well. So it's all a matter of, can we? do we think we can take that last shield? We're going to let this hit us. We're going to farm up max possible. Although the switch window is up on both sides, so we or it's very close. We do have to worry about them catching on Sableye. Switch is up. Decide to go for the move here against Sableye. He definitely saw the switch in. It's not like they caught or anything. Um, just trying to get rid of this Sableye that has a little bit of energy as well. So... Right now in a decent spot. Interesting coming in the Skeledurge right away. Okay, so with the new Sky Attack da uh, energy cost, technically we would have been able to outpace to the Sky Attack. They are getting going for energy, though. They definitely could have thrown at any point there. Um, going to be able to get to the second one, but they're going to be able to throw. I'm not sure Sky Attack KOs from here. Sky Attack, after being reduced in damage two seasons ago, um, definitely a little sus here. So I believe we're very close to, if not already, at the Rock Slide on um, on Vigoroth. And we probably live... Oh, no, we definitely don't live a Sky Attack. But the extra energy it takes to go for the Sky Attack here definitely going to allow us to get to this Rock Slide. And then they have no energy on this Azu. We can get to the Body Slam. <laughs> or we can catch. And unnecessary either way. We would have gotten the, the move with uh, Chris Elliot anyways here. It just takes Azu so long to get to its moves that um something would have gotten to a move here all right wigglytuff um technically we would love to see wigglytuff against skeledurge but also our whole team's kind of neutral to good against it vigoroth is decent um i think it's kind of iv dependent um for the ones but um Skeletors is obviously insane against wigglytuff so we're probably going to end up seeing the third pokemon here which is really going to give us uh an idea, not not only just an idea, an exact idea of what we want to do with the rest of this matchup. We get the extra damage off here with the Shadow Ball, but we have Vigoroth. Their switch isn't up for another 15 seconds, so gonna get a ton of damage in here. Probably could go for a shield if we wanted to here. Makes a lot of sense. Probably gonna get that shield back here as soon as they switch into the Wigglytuff right here. Um, we can definitely go for two of these Body Slams. The the charge attacks are actually going to be way better against the Wigglytuff than they ever would be against the um, uh, the Bastion. So I like going for the moves here. Going to stay in and just 
allow us to get to another body slam, I guess. Interesting. Um, is he going to try to win with Cresselia? Or are we going to switch to Cresselia now? Okay. I don't know about this one. It's getting close. Also, someone just subscribed while I'm recording this video at 9.47 p.m. Central Time. Jose Rulon. Thank you for the subscription. And that's a good time to say, since this is going to be an infinitely long matchup with the Bastion. Actually, they're pretty close to getting KO'd. Two, two Grass Knots away. And we do have the shield for the one move that they still have coming through. Um, now's a good time to say, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, be like Jose Rulan. And uh, yeah, you'll see more of these videos as they come out. Anyways, back to this Bastion matchup. They go for the Stone Edge. We live it because we're just a bulk monster and able to get this second Grass Knot out, which is going to KO the Bastion. Very interesting play against the Wigglytuff. Chestnut. Okay, it does. Okay, the Moonblast is good against it, but the Charizard is tough here. Probably we have to go into the Vigoroth. Um, Body Slam going to actually be a decent amount of damage. Probably going to go for the bait here on the first one, go all the way up to the Rock Slide. But we can go ahead and shield this first move here. Shadow Charizard does do a lot of damage. Probably this is a bait. Actually not. Okay, so now do we bait? I don't think so. I think we're definitely still going to go for double Body Slam. Again, like I said earlier with the Skeletor Edge, Fire Types just very squishy in Great League. Um, there's really no bulky Fire Type, none that I can think of at least. Maybe if you guys know, let me know in the in the comments below. But um, we did throw a move at the Charizard, so we do have to be careful about, well, I was going to say the switches, but this is also a little awkward, although we are ahead on energy. Um, I'm sorry, we're ahead on like timing because they had a swap and we got that at first incinerate through. So, but they outpace us to the fly. So I really, because they can get to double fly before before we get to the double shadow ball, even with the even with the uh, energy advantage there. So I like coming in and just taking this move. We're going to go all in on Skeleturge. Obviously, it's uh, super effective against the uh, Chestnut. Um, we're just going to go for any move we can here. Uh, they're going to get to another fly, but we still have a shield. So um, I like not going for the disarming voice. Um, <laughs> do we have a disarming voice? Oh, we don't. No, so this is going to be GG, right? We just lose this one, I think. Okay, I liked not going for the first disarming voice, but I definitely would have shielded the fly. It's the only move that does anything left in the game, unless he had two flies, but there's no way, right? Anyways, uh, Vigoroth lead into the Cresselia. This is definitely Cresselia favored. Um, very interesting to come into the Skeletor here. Probably we're going to have to shield. We're calling a bait? I guess we technically... Do we survive a rock slide? Not 100% on that, but... Um, definitely gonna have to shield now. This is definitely a second bait for sure. Oh my god. Okay. Um, we can't get the farm down because they get to the second rock slide here in six, and they would actually be able to throw right before getting KO'd by that last incinerate. And we would be down two shields, which is not great. Although we have a huge energy advantage now on the Skeleturge. Um, they do come in with the Feraligator. I guess. I, I do like going for Disarming Voice here for Alligator, especially the Shadow variant, is very squishy. So we want to have a chance to basically take all the shields. Although they'll probably not shield this one, but they're going to take a lot of damage from it if they don't. So it's a little risky not to shield here, but they also knew it was never going to be a Shadow Ball. So as long as you know your IVs, you know, that's the way to do it. Okay, they come in with Annihilate. We could go straight for the Moon Blast. We already showed a uh, Grass Knot, but our second move would always be something that could KO. So they have to make a call here anyways. And then we're going to have to make a call because they could... Shadow Ball probably does KO from this range. And this is just a Night Slash. Oh, it's a Shadow Ball. Oh, it doesn't KO. Okay, nice. Going for the absolute max so that they don't get extra energy uh, when they come back into farm is, is the perfect play. Um, cause Shadow Claw could definitely get a lot of energy here. We're going to come back in with Vigoroth. Again, we double resist the Shadow Claws, but if they get to two Hydro Cannons, it's definitely going to KO. Um, yeah, that's going to be GG. Well, yeah, I think so. GG. It's a close one though. Close. 
All right, uh, Saint Slash lead here. Um, they do switch into a lantern. It is Spark. I mean, which is something. Um, Shadow Ball going to do a lot of damage. At least it's not Water Gun, which is going to be super effective against the Skeleturge. Uh, but we did get a lot of damage off here. But the Surf... Surf's not going to KO, but are we going to get farmed down by the Sparks here? It looks like we... No, it looks like we're not going to. So maybe we get a Shield here, which would give us the advantage going into the next matchup, which would leave our Vigoroth in a very good place against whatever's in the back, being hopefully neutral against that, and then having the Shield advantage... Uh, counteract that neutrality and then um, having counter damage against the um, against the alone and sand slash hopefully so um, probably gonna let us hit him, us with another move here again this is kind of like the Azu matchup it kind of doesn't do a lot of damage so we want to get a lot of energy in place here we end up coming in with the Vigoroth to get a bit of farm down a little bit of extra farm rather going into this next matchup the, and it is Azu so it's not the greatest matchup for Vigoroth, but we, again, we do have a two shield advantage and we have a three counter advantage coming into this matchup. So we've got a ton of advantages to hopefully um, secure the damage. And all we have to do is use our shields in this matchup because the other two matchups, and, and we definitely want to throw all of our energy. We don't care about energy management against this Azu as long as we're going on good timing here. Um, but I mean, we don't need extra energy coming out of this matchup because the other two mod in the back, the Lantern is very low on HP, not enough HP to get to another move, so fast attack that, that down. And then against the Alone and Sand Slash, our counters are doing double super effective, whereas both of our moves, well, the Rock Slide is neutral, but the Body Slam is resisted. So they end up trying to catch here with the Lantern. Now they're going to show us 100% what, the, what they're going to be coming in with, whether it's the Azu they're going to get stuck with, and then we just get to two Body Slams, or um, the Vigoroth. And then the Vigoroth, or the uh, Alone and Sand Slash, I think the Alone and Sand Slash also had... Um, and we can just go for terrible timing, whatever we want to do here, because we just need to get to that Vigoroth matchup and do super effective fast attack damage. But I was going to say, I think it has Shadow Claw, which is double resisted. Um, we get a lot of damage off. We do throw this move. It's really just our last ditch effort to do any damage, but we still have a lot of energy still, I think, on a Cresselia. And um, even though this is resisted, Shadow and having high attack stat means it's going to do a lot of damage. We have to shield. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. I don't think they can get to double Ice Punch. Oh, and they definitely... Oh, Well, this is not double Drill Run, though. So we do live an Ice Punch here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, my God. Oh, the beginning matchup. I didn't count the extra two Shadow Claws there. Okay. That makes sense. Instead of the 10 I thought they were at, they are at 12. Okay. Whew. All right. Whimsicott here against the Cresselia. This is probably Cresselia favored. Getting a little bit of lag here. Um... Both get to the Moonblast at the same time. The only thing is... Oh, we got reduced! Um, we could switch to Skeledurge, actually. Um, I can't believe we got attack dropped here. Um, we're going to go for the extra uh, energy here because we're hoping that the next Moonblast does KO, which it basically should. Um, so we want to come out of this matchup with a little bit of energy, making sure to pause a turn there just to make sure that they don't swap into something catching this Moonblast. Um, they do go for the shield as well. Um, technically, the next Moonblast doesn't KO us either, but we could shield and get even more energy. But technically, we live this. And they do go for the Seed Bomb. Oh, my gosh. All right. We're trying to win this lead, but we're really hoping that Skeletor has play in the back because it has so much play here in the front that it excuse me, might be tough for it to really have play here in the back. Definitely going to come in with Vigoroth, I think, into this matchup after the Cresselia gets KO'd. Okay. It, it is interesting to come in with the Skeleturge here because you assume that Skeleturge has no play in the back. If anything, at this point, I think it's a Feraligator. Oh, it ends up being a Vigoroth in its own. Um, this is okay. We could actually go all in on Skeleturge. Um, do we have... A lead here in energy or is it going to be a cmp i think it's going to be cmp um probably just let this go get to let the skeleton get two more incinerates through which is actually going to help us so much here in this last in this back matchup oh my god they undercharge so well the only thing is i think it doesn't matter because um we can shield one time and the incinerate damage is actually insane incinerate is well known to have just the highest uh the highest damage per second of any of the fire moves and it's great energy generation as well which means we can also get to a second charge attack here um and we know we're gonna get icy wind 100 percent, but we have to shield just in case this is the, it is the drill run 
but uh, yeah, we make it through. Another Whimsicott. You know, I actually saw a streamer using Whimsicott earlier today. Um, I don't know if people are using it based on that, but um, Whimsicott's interesting. Not a mon that I've used a lot. We got the debuff again? That is awful. Wait, is this the same match? 1485? No, they try to catch with an Empoleon. We come in with our Vigoroth. Um, I mean, you can definitely take a Hydro Cannon here, so you just try to go to the max energy with the and then throw, I guess, just a Body Slam. But is that actually going to be enough to KO? I don't know. Okay, Rock Slide does do more raw damage, even though it is less damage per energy. So he must be able to think that that gets the KO. That is insane. That is great matchup awareness. Um, I don't think the Body Slam would have KO'd there. And we're pulling the energy from this. Not only that, depending on what the timers are at, we can get a little bit of time in with our, for our uh, Skeleturge here. And actually, yeah, they're stuck in for at least two Incinerates. And we also resist everything it throws here. So now, even if it were to get out at this point, it's used all of its energy. It's taken a ton of damage. We have a lot of an energy lead that we um, can throw this energy into this. Probably we can switch into the Cresselia at this point. Yeah, we almost have two Grass Knots. One Grass Knot almost going to be able to KO. And... Um, Obviously, we're not going to be in range of really getting hindered by this for alligator either. So, Gligar, a mon that I have not seen today in a ton of matches that I've watched um, from 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 uh, Twitch streamers, um, which is weird because because Gligar is just like the epitome of great league. It is so safe. It must be that there's a lot of hate going around to try to. Um, hard counter the Gligars, so a lot of the Gligars getting pushed out of the meta. I say pushed out for like a day until the meta switches a little bit, right? And people start hitting on that, and then it becomes more neutral oriented, and then people want to go back to the Gligar just to be kind of as safe as possible. Um, getting these moves before them, we can definitely get a shield here if we wanted to get a shield advantage, which I think we probably would really uh, love. Kind of just have to stay in here because Vigoroth is our real only answer to this. Again, we can take one. Oh my god, we lagged a turn. Um, we can take one Hydro Cannon, which is fine. But they're going to be able to make it to two. Um, we kind of have to shield this because we need to do a lot more damage to this for Alligator. And we really need to hope that Skeletor is good in the back here. It could be a Whizcash in the back. It could be like... Uh, could be Lickitung. I actually think Lickitung is the most obvious thing it could be. Um, so maybe he wants to make it to that matchup, thinking it's going to be a Lickitung no matter what. Okay, maybe we do have two here, but are they at a move now? And are we going to try to catch on Skeleturge? Ends up being a Bomb of Snow, and that's just going to be a farm down in three incinerates. And then a Shadow Ball. That's GG. Okay, double super effective incinerate three shots. Uh, was that a regular bomb of snow? Yeah, dang. Does it two shot shadow bomb of snow? I guess twenty percent more damage, but we'd have to do something like thirty percent. So it probably three shots the shadow. So it's really no gain there. So uh, for alligator here in the lead, it is a weird matchup in the longer shield scenarios because it does outpace us. But we are able to take the shields a lot faster because we do basically one shot with Grass Knot. Um, but he can definitely need two shields and I think probably farm us down from here, I would assume. They end up switching into Typhlosion, which is a little awkward for them because um, it's not like Skeleturge where we can, we're allowed to throw Body Slam into this because it's going to do a lot of damage. I honestly would probably just let this go. We could come in with our Skeleturge and farm this down if we want to. Um, and if they go for the Thunder Punch, they definitely just get farmed down. And probably we're going to make it to a Body Slam against whatever comes here in the back. Folly Wrath. Okay, what was the lead? Yeah, we probably have to come in with Skeleturge. I think we got the one-turn delay here. Not great. Yeah, we were because they were as good as five. This could be Scald, and we do have to be worried about it. Um, no debuff. They do try to safe swap or they try to insta swap for I guess a combo play, but we end up getting that grass knot off. Maybe they weren't at a move because they did swap out of it, right? But I feel like they were at a move and they just miscounted, but whatever. Um it is a regular polywrath, so technically I think we live a scald, but 
uh, yeah, getting into this move before them, definitely going to KO. Um, Disarming Voice, I think, does more damage, but it doesn't really matter. You get to both moves at the exact same time. All right, uh, thank you so much for doing both, for letting me showcase those battles. Um, again, check him out on Twitch. He's literally one of the best um, battlers in the world, if not the best. Um, I don't know how to determine that because... Well, let's not get into a rant here. I was going to say, like, even if you win the World Championship, there's a lot of luck involved in um, in those games because if you're playing, if everyone playing is at the exact same, like, super high level, it's going to take a lot of luck to win, like, seven in a row, eight in a row, nine in a row, whatever it takes to win Worlds. So definitely one of the high, uh, everyone basically who makes it to Worlds or at least into, like, day two of Worlds is, like, the highest possible caliber player and dune bug is one of those highest possible caliber players and winning three regionals and second place in an international in just this season definitely proves that so um yeah that's gonna be it for me if you like this video hit the like button and if you haven't definitely hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next one